that you got a group in there. Can you quickly talk about uh, this group that you had in? Uh, I, I thought it was a good workout. Uh, very competitive. Uh, John Trelor did a, did a great job of uh, organizing and, and setting things up. So uh, I mean, we're happy. It's still the beginning of the process for us. Uh, and, uh, just evaluating and, uh, and looking at guys. Mm -hmm. Excuse June, me. Okay. Go ahead. Well, June 23rd is, is uh, rapidly approaching. Uh, how would you say you guys are? How deep are you into your evaluation process? Uh, I mean, how, how deep? Uh, I mean, as deep as you can be at this point. We've seen them all play throughout the course of the season or the, the college season. Uh, and we've seen them in Chicago. Uh, we've begun to interview guys, watch a lot of tape, so uh, I'd say we're pretty deep. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I don't know what to expect from this question, but I want to ask it anyway. Uh, anybody jumping out at you? Oh, it's a ton of people jumping out at me. Uh, lots of guys. You care to get specific at all? Uh, as far as uh, guys, you mean in the draft, jumping, yeah. obviously, or in the workout? Would be a little more. You'd be a little more okay. specific first. All right. Uh, Let's, let's take today's uh, guys. Uh, who jumped out to you from today's group? Every single one of them. Great, great guys. Uh, they were competitive. Uh, they shot the ball well. Uh, very respectful, easy, and good to talk to. Uh, and uh, they're making us think a little deeper. As we get to know you in this front office here, can you give us an idea of your philosophy relative to the draft here? I mean, is it that old, you know, proverbial best player available or you draft for me? I mean, what's your philosophy? Uh, I mean, I, I think, you know, the draft is one of those uh, points in the season where you have another opportunity to add talent. Uh, and uh, you always want to uh, look at the, the draft uh, very, uh, very carefully because uh, it's a chance to get better and young at the same time, which is not very easy. Uh, you know, is it a crapshoot or is it more science or art? Uh, who knows? Uh, I think when we talk about uh, best available uh, versus uh, the, the need, I think that's a sliding scale. Uh, you, know, you tell me the names and I'll tell you which way we would go with that. So uh, I think that's probably my overall basic philosophy. Walk in here knowing that you lost a dynamic force in a market and you lost a player in a uh, Jason as well. I mean, do you pinpoint that biggest need area? Do you want to look to replace a power forward, bring a power forward in, or you look to uh, more at the shooting guard? What's your biggest need here? I think up front, uh, we we need to get better uh, and look a little more uh, physical. Uh, and then on the perimeter, uh, it's not a secret. I mean, we have a surplus of threes, uh, uh, but the off guard uh, position is, is something that. Uh, We'd like to inject, um, and then after that, it's, it's a little bit of a, a free-for-all in terms of who the player might be and, and what the situation might be. On that. And if there, did it just Matt, work out this way that this is your first workout two weeks before the draft? A lot of teams have already had several, but is it just a matter of schedules, or you do this on purpose to wait? I think it's a mixture of both. Uh, I mean, we've had. Uh, you're certain we didn't have workouts. I'm, I'm yeah, presuming okay. with that question. <laughs> well, yeah, there, there have been guys in in our facility uh, before now, and um, also you're all, you're competing with guys scheduling wise. We saw guys in uh, Chicago, so uh, I, I'm, I'm not certain of what the question is. But if it's you thought that this is the first workout, it's not, and we feel confident and comfortable with the guys. We'll be able to see uh, between now and leading up to the to the draft. If that addresses what you're yeah, addressing. Yeah, Jess. Does the group indicate that you're looking to get into the second round and maybe acquire another pick, or are you looking at potential free season? Well, hopefully you take from this that we're doing our due diligence. Uh, you know, we we uh, have a pick, and uh, whether that means we get more or not, who knows? But we've got to do our due diligence. This is a continuation of the process. Well, I, 
I don't want to sound coy because it's hard. I'm not sure what you're saying. I don't think you're going to have to have a draft. I had a great year in college and did a very good job. I thought he showed well, as I mentioned, he had all the guys did in the workout. So uh, where his stock, then, stock is now, it's, just, it's a perception of it. It's a real So I wouldn't want to speculate. And a little bit of what the latter, what you said, uh, uh, depends on what the team is looking for him to do. Uh, doesn't look like a bruiser, uh, for sure. Uh, but he's also very young and still has a chance uh, to grow and will continue to grow and find his way. So uh, I think it just depends on the team and what they're looking for. You know, it's not uncommon this time of year to start hearing some of those uh, rumors as it relates to trades and things like that. I heard the Phoenix Suns name mentioned in that regard, in Minnesota in particular, Johnny Brown. Man, comes up, comes up. Do, do the Phoenix Suns have interest in perhaps trading up in this draft? Well, I mean, we, we have interest as, as we've spoken when we've had the, the trades and, and always looking to get better. Whether that means us moving up, back, out, I don't know. But uh, we, we, have, uh, we have a lot of interest in, in trying to do whatever we can uh, to get better you know, for this organization, our fans, and uh, the team. So uh, I, would, I would be out of place telling you that that means we're going to move up or back or sideways for that matter. Do you feel that if you decided to just stay content at 13 and made no moves at all, that, that you could get better moving forward? With that pick, mm -hmm. I think yeah. This this uh, I think this draft is uh, it's got a lot of parity, uh, and um, you know, I'm not one of those who get into trying to predict how good the players are, uh, where they're going to end up. Uh, I think that you know in, in every draft there's been good players that have come out of it, uh, and I don't think this draft is is any different than that. And, I think with the 13th pick, we're, we're excited to have it. We feel like we can get a good player there and someone that uh, will have the potential to help us, whether it's in the near term or the long term. You guys place such an emphasis on improving defensively, I mean, to the point where you even go out and look at defensive assistance and things of that nature. Do you look at this draft uh, primarily as feeling, feeling that you can bring in players that can help you in that regard, or is it just, uh, just the best is there? Uh, come, come again with the question. You, you talked about improving defensively. Is pick 13 a player that you look at in that regard, or is it just uh, whoever's available? I think you tell me the list of players, and I'll tell you what we're looking at. I mean, they're all guys, a lot of guys that do different things. Some guys are shooters, scorers, defenders, um, great character guys, and, and, and the like. So uh, if you're asking uh, or we're looking for a defender at that pick, I, I don't know. I mean, we're looking for someone that can help us win games and uh, help put this organization back in, in the playoffs. The interview process, how much, how important is that for you, not just this year, but, you know, since you've been doing this versus just you know, watching guys but able to sit down one-on-one -on -one and talk to them? Very important um, because uh, you think we know that these guys can play. They, they wouldn't be here at this point. They've had a lot of success at the collegiate level, uh, often at the high school level. And so now getting to know them as people, is, is very important and as if not more important than, than what you see in these workouts on the floor. Um, are they going to work in, in your community? Are they going to work within your organization? Uh, are they the type of people that are going to be good teammates, uh, easy to coach, hard to coach? Uh, and you can't uh, gain that knowledge by just watching them uh, in a workout uh, situation. You've got to sit down with them, um, talk to them, talk about their lives and things that are important to them and not important, etc. So very important to do the interviews. How would you characterize this group of players overall that you brought in today? Solid. These guys are, I mean, there are some NBA players in there. A lot of times, whether a guy makes it or not, is situational. And who drafts him and what they're looking for and what the guy can, can bring. So uh, this group uh, is no different. And as I mentioned with the draft in general, uh, there's a, probably a player at 13 that you might be able to get at 
10 or 15 that could be just as good as a player drafted at five. So uh, with the parity of this draft, I think uh, you got to be careful of, of thinking just because a player is drafted high uh, that he's going to be the best player in the draft. I think there are players that will be pretty good that are drafted after those top guys. Most of these guys have strong defensive reputations. Is that why you happen to group most of them together today? You would have to get the details of that, uh, John Trulo. Uh, we, 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 he puts them together, and uh, we come out and look at them. And we just need guys that can play in the NBA and help this team and organization. Uh, and how he paired them in terms of the defenses. So Juwan was you know, one of the best in the, in the Big Ten. So I, I got to believe he offered a little bit of offense. Uh, so in terms of the pairing for defense, uh, that, that's probably more of a, a John question, but there's like an underlying current here of this whole. We keep hearing this defense thing with guys and guys that we're drafting for deep. What, what, what's what's that? If I can ask you guys a question. Well, you made it uh, crystal clear that this team has to improve defensively, and uh, I watch this group of players that we've seen here in the past. We don't know if that necessarily uh, translates to those type of players. So maybe you're looking to bring in players that can help you in that regard. So that's why we asked. Okay, I got it. Yeah, well, we're looking for guys that can can help us get back in the playoffs and move this organization forward. Uh, we feel like we need to get tougher, but. Uh, it doesn't mean that we don't want to score points. You got to score points to win to win basketball games, and a lot of these guys can can do that as well. The unknown of the next CBA is that getting more difficult to do like, uh, trades involving the personnel because you don't know what you're going into as far as a cap and those sorts of things. That's the question. Is the new CBA? Just not knowing what the new CBA is going to be make it harder to make a, a trade that would. Change the it makes it harder. We just, we just don't know what the new CBA is going to be. And, you know, we can all come up with ideas and thoughts about what we think it'll be. But I think if if uh, our focus is on making this the best organization, the best basketball team that we can put on the floor is the main focus, which it is, then you have to let all the rest of it take place. So, uh, I mean, we're, we're all experts and professionals. That's our main focus. And as far as trying to predict what might happen or not happen with the season, we're not even there. Can you talk about what you have in that group tomorrow? I can't. But I'm not. <laughs> You're capable. I'm capable. I'm capable, I'm capable but I'm not. One <laughs> How would I do that? Then that would, then that would just be promoted and tweeted out. Uh, can't tell the playbook. That's what people want to know. Anyway. The, the, the they want to know what you guys think relative to uh, prospects. But I, that, I mean, that would be like Alvin showing up his last play call to finish a game. Like people want to know that, but why, why, why would you do that? It's it, it just inquiring minds. Oh, and then you catch me in a trap if we if we change course or someone cancels, which I'm starting to hear might be a possibility. Now I've told you something, and I've breached our trust, and your confidence in me, and now you think that I'm a dishonest kind of guy. I, mean, I, I would hate to do that. I want to maintain credibility and a good relationship with you guys. As I answer the last two questions, and not tell you something that may not come true. Would you be surprised if a deal was made before the expiration of the season? Nothing in the NBA ever surprises me. Would you be inclined to uh, do something from that standpoint from a son's uh, uh, viewpoint? If it made sense to better this organization, absolutely. You can't be afraid to try to get better. Thank you. Uh, seriously, any deal <laughs> going in, in Europe with uh, Chris Mark Biombo? He's got to work out in Italy this week. Uh, we have an international scout who takes care of that. We've got people who've seen him and are aware of that situation at a high detail level. Did you see Best League play this week? Did I? Did I? You, your organization. Our uh, organization has seen him a lot. We've seen, we've seen him a lot and are very, very aware of him. Any other th anything else? And does Mark West have anything uh, left in the tank? Clear West? You don't. You might have to add, talk to Mark. I, you might. That'd be cool. It's not There's some enough. defense. He's not getting the lottery.